Have you ever felt like you're trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle when you listen to native English speakers? They use these phrases that seem perfectly normal to them, but to you, they're a jumble of words. Welcome to the world of phrasal verbs, where verbs team up with prepositions or adverbs to create entirely new meanings. These dynamic duos are the key to unlocking natural fluent English. But fear not, language learners. This isn't some impossible puzzle. We're about to embark on an adventure that will explain clearly phrasal verbs and give you the tools you need to conquer them. Think of phrasal verbs as the secret code to unlocking true fluency in English. Native speakers sprinkle them casually into conversations, emails, and even formal writing. They add color, nuance, and a touch of natural rhythm to the language. Mastering them will not only boost your comprehension, but also elevate your own speaking and writing. You'll be able to express yourself with more accuracy, confidence, and that effortless flow that makes native speakers sound so, well, native. Ready to crack the code? Let's dive in. Imagine this, you're having a conversation and you want to express that you need to postpone a meeting. You could say, I need to delay the meeting. Perfectly grammatically correct, right? But what if you said, I need to put off the meeting? Sounds more natural, doesn't it? That's the magic of phrasal verbs. They make your speech more casual and genuine. Plus, understanding phrasal verbs opens up a whole new world of idiomatic expressions. Those colorful sayings that add personality and humor to the English language. In this video, we'll break down common phrasal verbs into bite-sized pieces. We'll explore their meanings, see them in action with clear examples, and even test your knowledge with a couple of fun quizzes along the way. No more feeling lost in translation. By the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to speaking and writing English with greater confidence and fluency. So grab a notebook, get ready to take some notes, and let's unlock the power of phrasal verbs together. Feel free to ask questions, share your thoughts, and practice with your peers in the comments below. The more interactive and collaborative our learning environment, the more effective it will be. Ready to jump in? Great. Your enthusiasm and willingness to learn are the first steps toward mastering phrasal verbs. Let's dive into our first set of phrasal verbs and see how they can be used in different contexts. We'll start with some that you might already be familiar with, and then we'll explore new ones. Let's start with a phrasal verb you probably already know. Look up, as in, look up a word in the dictionary. Or to improve, as in, things are looking up. We'll explore different ways to use look up and practice creating sentences with it. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use look up in various contexts. So grab your notebooks and let's get started. Look up can have a couple of different meanings depending on the context. First, it can literally mean to raise your eyes to see something above you. For example, you might say, I looked up and saw a beautiful bird flying overhead. But look up also has a figurative meaning, which is to search for information, usually in a dictionary, book, or online. So if you're not sure what a word means, you might look it up online. Easy peasy, right? See how one phrasal verb can have multiple meanings? That's the beauty, and sometimes the challenge, of mastering them. Let's move on to another common phrasal verb, come across. Come across means to find something or someone unexpectedly. It's like stumbling upon a hidden treasure or having a chance encounter. For instance, you might say, I came across this amazing little bookstore while I was exploring the city. Or I came across my old college roommate at the coffee shop. What a coincidence. It's like saying, guess what I found, or you won't believe who I ran into. Next up, mastering get along. Get along is all about relationships. It means to have a harmonious or friendly relationship with someone. 
You might say, I get along really well with my siblings or my colleagues and I get along great at work. It implies a sense of ease, compatibility, and positive interaction. We all want to get along with the people in our lives, right? Now that we've covered three common phrasal verbs, let's see how well you've been paying attention. Pop quiz time. All right, it's time to put your knowledge to the test. Don't worry, this is just a quick check-in to see how you're doing so far. Which phrasal verb would you use to describe finding something unexpectedly? A. Look up. B. Come across. C. Get along. If you need to find the definition of a word, you would it in a dictionary. A. Get along. B. Look up. C. Come across. Take a moment to think about your answers and drop a comment below. Ready for more? That was just a taste of the wonderful world of phrasal verbs. We've only just scratched the surface and there's so much more to explore. How did you do on the quiz? If you got both answers right, give yourself a pat on the back. And if not, no worries at all. The more you practice, the more natural these phrasal verbs will become. Next, we'll delve into some slightly more challenging phrasal verbs and see how they add nuance and depth to your English. Stay tuned. You've mastered some basic phrasal verbs, and now you're ready to level up your skills. Now, we'll explore phrasal verbs that are a tad trickier but oh so rewarding once you've got them under your belt. Get ready to unlock new levels of fluency as we delve into the nuances of these versatile verbs. We'll break them down step by step, look at how they function in different contexts, and equip you with the knowledge to use them confidently in your own conversations. Remember, the key to mastering phrasal verbs is practice, practice, practice. So let's dive right in and conquer these linguistic challenges together. Our first challenge is figure out. This handy phrasal verb means to solve a problem, understand something complex, or discover a solution. It's like finding the missing piece of a puzzle or cracking a code. Imagine you're trying to assemble a piece of furniture without instructions. You might say, I'm trying to figure out how to put this bookshelf together. Or if you're baffled by a friend's behavior, you could say, I can't figure out why she's acting so strangely. Figure out implies a process of deduction, analysis, and ultimately a satisfying aha moment when you finally grasp the solution. Let's move on to another intriguing phrasal verb, run into. Hold on tight because run into has two main meanings and they're quite different. First, it can mean to encounter someone unexpectedly, similar to come across. You might say, I ran into my old neighbor at the grocery store today. It implies a chance meeting often brief and unplanned. But run into can also mean to collide with something physically. For example, the car ran into a tree. In this context, it's important to pay attention to the object of the verb to understand the meaning. See how context is key with phrasal verbs. The surrounding words and the overall situation help to clarify the intended meaning. Ready for another challenge? Conquering put up with. Put up with is all about tolerance, but not necessarily in a positive way. It often involves enduring something that is unpleasant or annoying, something that you would rather not deal with if you had the choice. It means to endure or tolerate something unpleasant or annoying. This could be anything from a noisy environment to a difficult person. The key aspect of put up with is that it involves a certain level of patience and forbearance, often accompanied by a sense of frustration or resignation. Imagine you have a coworker who constantly interrupts you. This can be incredibly frustrating, especially if you're trying to focus on an important task. You might find yourself thinking, I don't know how much longer I can put up with his constant interruptions. 
This phrase captures the essence of enduring something that is not only annoying, but also disruptive to your workflow. You might say, I don't know how much longer I can put up with her constant interruptions. This is a common scenario in many workplaces and even in academic settings. The ability to put up with such interruptions often requires a great deal of patience and self-control. Or, if you're staying in a noisy hotel room, you could say, I can't put up with this racket any longer. Noise can be a significant source of stress and having to endure it for an extended period can be quite taxing. This is another example of how put up with is used to describe a situation where you have to tolerate something unpleasant. Put up with suggests a sense of forbearance, often with a hint of frustration or resignation. It's not just about tolerating something, it's about doing so with a certain level of emotional strain. This phrase is often used in situations where the person has no other choice but to endure the unpleasantness. Now that we've tackled three more challenging phrasal verbs, it's time to put your knowledge to the test again. Understanding how to use put up with in various contexts can greatly enhance your communication skills. Whether you're dealing with a noisy environment, a difficult person, or any other challenging situation, knowing how to express your tolerance and endurance can be incredibly useful. Let's delve deeper into some more examples to solidify our understanding. Consider a situation where you're dealing with a long commute to work every day. You might say, I have to put up with an hour long commute each way. This not only highlights the inconvenience, but also the endurance required to deal with it daily. Another example could be dealing with a difficult neighbor. You might say, I can't put up with my neighbor's loud music every night. This shows the frustration and the limit of your tolerance. In relationships, put up with can also come into play. For instance, you might hear someone say, I don't know how she puts up with his bad habits. This indicates a level of patience and tolerance that might be beyond what most people are willing to endure. It's important to note that put up with is often used in a negative context, but it can also highlight someone's strength and resilience. Being able to put up with difficult situations or people can be seen as a testament to one's character and endurance. Now let's consider how put up with can be used in a more positive light. For example, you might say, she puts up with a lot at work, but she never complains. This shows admiration for someone's ability to endure difficult circumstances without letting it affect their attitude. In summary, put up with is a versatile phrase that can be used in various contexts to describe the act of enduring something unpleasant. Whether it's a noisy environment, a difficult person, or a challenging situation, this phrase helps convey the sense of tolerance and forbearance required to deal with it. As you continue to expand your vocabulary and understanding of phrasal verbs, remember that mastering phrases like put up with can greatly enhance your ability to communicate effectively. It's not just about knowing the words, but understanding the nuances and emotions behind them. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where you have to endure something unpleasant, think about how you can use put up with to express your experience. It's a powerful phrase that captures the essence of tolerance and resilience. Keep practicing, and soon you'll find that using phrasal verbs like put up with becomes second nature. Remember, language is a tool, and the more you practice, the more proficient you'll become. Keep up the great work. If you are enjoying this video and find it helpful, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Quiz challenge round two. Get ready for round two of our phrasal verb quiz. 
This time the stakes are a little higher, but so are the rewards. Sharpen your pencils, focus your minds, and let's see what you've learned. Which phrasal verb would you use to describe finally understanding a difficult concept? A, run into, B, figure out, C, put up with, if you accidentally bump into someone you know at the mall, which phrasal verb would you use? A, figure out. B, run into. C, put up with. Think carefully before you choose your answers. Onwards and upwards. Congratulations on completing another round of phrasal verb challenges. You're steadily climbing the ladder of English fluency, one phrasal verb at a time. How did you do on the quiz? If you aced it, give yourself a round of applause. And if not, no worries. Every mistake is an opportunity to learn and grow. In the next act, we'll explore even more fascinating phrasal verbs, including those used in professional settings and informal conversations. Get ready to expand your vocabulary and unleash your inner wordsmith. We're stepping into the world of business English where clear communication is key. Guess what? Phrasal verbs play a vital role here too. Don't let their casual vibe fool you. Certain phrasal verbs are essential for navigating the professional world. Now let's explore phrasal verbs, commonly used in workplaces, emails, and formal writing. Understanding these will boost your business communication skills and help you sound like a true professional. Ready to level up your business English? Let's dive in. Our first professional phrasal verb is carry out. This versatile phrase has two main meanings in the workplace. First, it means to perform or complete a task or duty. For instance, you might say, our team will carry out the marketing campaign next month. It implies taking action and seeing something through to completion. Carry out can also mean to conduct research or an experiment. Imagine a team of scientists saying, we are carrying out a study on the effects of climate change. See how carry out adds a sense of action and purpose? It's all about getting things done. Now, let's talk about report two. This phrasal verb is all about workplace hierarchy and communication flow. It means to be under the supervision or management of someone higher up in the organizational structure. For example, you might say, in my new role, I report to the marketing director. This clearly indicates your place within the team and who you're accountable to. Understanding report to helps clarify lines of communication and responsibilities within a company. It's all about knowing who's who and who answers to whom. Our final professional phrasal verb is account for. This phrase is incredibly versatile and can be used in various contexts, making it a valuable addition to your professional vocabulary. Like our previous examples, this one also wears multiple hats in the business world. It can be used in both formal and informal settings and understanding its nuances can significantly enhance your communication skills. First of all, account for means to provide an explanation or justification for something. This is particularly useful when you need to clarify a situation or provide reasoning behind a decision or outcome. Imagine your boss asking, can you account for the recent drop in sales? In this scenario, your boss is seeking a detailed explanation for the decline in sales figures. You might need to analyze various factors such as market trends, customer behavior, or even internal processes to provide a comprehensive answer. They're looking for a clear explanation of the situation. Providing a well-thought-out account can demonstrate your analytical skills and your ability to handle complex issues. It shows that you are not only aware of the problem, but also capable of identifying its root causes and potential solutions. 
Secondly, account for pops up frequently in financial contexts. In these situations, it often refers to quantifying or explaining the proportion of a particular element within a larger whole. Here, it means to make up a certain amount or proportion of something. For example, you might say, advertising expenses account for 20% of our total budget. This usage helps in breaking down financial data into understandable segments. For instance, online sales account for 60% of our total revenue. This statement not only provides a clear picture of the revenue distribution, but also highlights the importance of online sales to the overall business performance. Mastering account for will make you sound more confident and articulate in professional settings, especially when dealing with explanations and finances. It allows you to convey complex information in a clear and concise manner, which is a crucial skill in any professional environment. Additionally, using account for effectively can enhance your credibility. When you can accurately account for various aspects of a project or financial report, it shows that you have a deep understanding of the subject matter. This can build trust with your colleagues, superiors, and clients. It's also worth noting that account for can be used in non-financial contexts. For example, you might need to account for your time when working on multiple projects. This means providing a detailed explanation of how you allocated your time and resources to complete various tasks. In project management, being able to account for delays or changes in the project scope is essential. It helps in maintaining transparency and ensures that all stakeholders are aware of the current status and any potential issues that might arise. To sum up, account for is a multifaceted phrasal verb that can greatly enhance your professional communication. Whether you're explaining financial data, justifying decisions, or providing detailed reports, mastering this phrase will make you more effective and persuasive. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where you need to provide an explanation or break down complex information, remember to use account for. It will not only help you convey your message more clearly, but also demonstrate your expertise and professionalism. In conclusion, incorporating account for into your professional vocabulary is a smart move. It's a powerful tool that can help you navigate various scenarios with ease and confidence. So, start practicing today and see how it can transform your communication skills. We hope you found it insightful and that you feel more equipped to handle professional conversations with clarity and confidence. If you are finding this video insightful, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Time to put your professional phrasal verb knowledge to the test. Pause the video and drop your answers below. Get ready to impress your future employers with your impeccable business English. Which phrasal verb would you use to describe performing a work-related task? A. Report to B. Carry out C. Account for If you're asked to explain a sudden budget increase, you would it. A. Carry out B. Report to C. Account for Take your time, choose wisely, and let's see how you've mastered these professional phrasal verbs. Well done on completing another round of phrasal verb training. You're well on your way to conquering the world of business English, one phrasal verb at a time. How did you do on the quiz? Ace it? Drop a comment below. Give yourself a well-deserved pat on the back. If not, don't sweat it. Practice makes perfect. And every challenge is a stepping stone to fluency. Now, We'll explore phrasal verbs that spice up everyday conversations and make you sound like a natural. Buckle up because we're diving into the world of informal phrasal verbs. 
These are the gems that color everyday conversations, add personality to your speech, and make you sound like a natural when chatting with native speakers. Think of these phrasal verbs as the spices of the English language, adding flavor and zest to your sentences. They're perfect for casual settings, hanging out with friends, or even adding a touch of personality to your writing. Ready to unlock the fun and funky side of phrasal verbs? Let's jump right in. Let's kick things off with a classic, hang out with friends. This versatile phrasal verb simply means to spend time with someone in a relaxed or casual way. You might say, hey, wanna hang out at my place after work today? My friends and I usually hang out at the beach on weekends. Hang out implies a sense of ease, enjoyment, and shared experiences. It's all about spending quality time with the people you enjoy being around the most. Now, let's talk about freak out. This one's all about expressing strong reactions, usually surprise, excitement, or even a bit of fear. Imagine winning a dream vacation. You might freak out with joy. Or if you see a spider crawling on your arm, you might freak out and jump back in surprise. Freak out adds a touch of drama and intensity to your descriptions. It's like saying, I can't even handle this right now in a more expressive way. Our next phrasal verb is all about positive anticipation. Look forward to. This one's perfect for expressing excitement about upcoming events, plans, or experiences. You might say, I'm really looking forward to my vacation next month, or I can't wait to see that new movie. I've been looking forward to it for ages. Look forward to conveys a sense of eager anticipation and excitement. It's like saying, I can't wait for this, with a touch of extra enthusiasm. Ready to test your casual conversation skills? It's time for another pop quiz. This time, we're focusing on how these informal phrasal verbs in everyday conversations. Drop a comment below. Which phrasal verb would you use to suggest spending time with someone casually? A. Freak out. B. Hang out. C. Look forward to. If you're incredibly excited about an upcoming concert, you wouldn't. A. Freak out. About B. Look forward to C. Hang out. And think carefully before you make your choice. Drop your choices below in the comments. Congratulations on mastering another set of phrasal verbs. You're now equipped with the linguistic tools to navigate casual conversations with ease and confidence. How did you do on the quiz? Aced it. You're a phrasal verb superstar. If not, no worries. Every attempt brings you one step closer to fluency. Remember, the key to mastering phrasal verbs is to keep practicing and using them in your everyday life. So go out there, strike up conversations, and let your newfound phrasal verb prowess shine. Congratulations, language adventurers. You've reached the summit of our phrasal verb expedition. We've trekked through simple phrases, navigated the complexities of professional jargon, and even mastered the art of casual conversation, all thanks to the power of phrasal verbs. Remember that feeling of deciphering a code when you first started? Now look at you, confidently wielding these phrases like a linguistic pro. You've unlocked a whole new level of fluency, one phrasal verb at a time. But this isn't the end of our journey, it's just the beginning. The real transformation happens when you take these newfound skills out into the world and put them into practice. With each new phrasal verb, you've expanded your vocabulary, gained a deeper understanding of English grammar, and honed your ability to express yourself with greater precision and confidence. Remember, language learning is a journey, not a destination. Embrace the process, celebrate your progress, and never stop exploring the fascinating world of English. Now for the million dollar question, 
How do you make these phrasal verbs stick? The answer is simple. Practice, 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 just like learning a musical instrument or a new sport. Mastering phrasal verbs requires consistent effort and repetition. The more you use them, the more natural they will become. Don't be afraid to experiment. Use them in conversations, emails, even in your thoughts. The key is to integrate them into your daily life so they become second nature. As we've discovered, some phrasal verbs can be a bit like chameleons, changing their meaning depending on the context. Remember run into? It could mean bumping into someone unexpectedly or colliding with something. That's why it's crucial to pay attention to the surrounding words, the tone of voice, and the overall situation. Context provides the clues you need to decipher the true meaning of a phrasal verb. So, be a language detective. Let's now observe how phrasal verbs are used in different situations, and you'll soon become adept at deciphering their various meanings. Let's speed things up with a rapid fire round of phrasal verbs that are used every day. Ready, set, learn. Pick up, open, take out of, put on, take off, put in, close, put down, write in, write on, write down, take the trash out. Write up an essay. Thanks for watching. She's coming out of prison soon. Three buses came along at the same time. Don't worry, the stain will probably come out. The chain came apart. If the story comes out about the president, he'll be fired. She invited me to come along. I hope he comes around quickly after the surgery. Her test results came out fine. She came up with a great idea. They came across the most delicious cafe. They will come back in January. The team really came through tonight. What time is he going to come to the party? She came down with COVID. She'll come by around six. Which sentence correctly uses the phrasal verb come across? A. I come across the street to meet my friend. B. She came across an old photo album while cleaning the attic. C. They come across with a new plan every week. Drop your answer in the comments below. Phrasal verbs with put, put aside, put by, put in, put on, put off, put up, put up with, put up to, put down, put aside. For example, he's putting aside some money for a new house. Or he's putting aside the boxes for now. Put aside means, one, to keep or save something for later use. Money, time, boxes. Two, to stop worrying or thinking about something. Turn on, off, turn up, down, turn right, left, set off, get up, get dressed, get on, get off, get out of. Get a ticket, get a degree. Get ready for, get hungry, get a cold, get a job, get into trouble, get married, get changed, get lost, get some exercise. Get across, get ahead, get around, get around to, get along with, get at, get away, get away with, get back, get back at. Get by, get down, get down to. Which phrasal verb correctly completes the sentence below? She decided to. The volume because it was too loud. 
A, turn down B, turn right C, turn off there. Drop your answer in the comments below. Say no. Say yes. Say hello. Say please. Say goodbye. Say something. He invited us out. He invited us in. He invited them up. She invited me around. They invited us over. She invited me along. Bill invited him back. Take off. Take out. Take in. Take over. Take back. Take up. Take away. Which phrasal verb correctly completes the sentence below? He decided to. The offer because it wasn't what he was looking for. A. Turn down. B. Take off. C. Take over. Drop your answer in the comments below. Think back to when we first embarked on this adventure. We started with simple pairings like look up and get along. Gradually building our way up to more nuanced phrases like account for and look forward to. Phrasal verbs are your friends. Yes, we get it. Phrasal verbs can be tricky. They're seemingly random combinations of verbs and prepositions can feel perplexing at times. But instead of viewing them as obstacles, embrace them as opportunities for growth. Each challenge you overcome strengthens your language skills and brings you one step closer to fluency. Remember, even native speakers make mistakes with phrasal verbs from time to time. So don't be afraid to experiment, make mistakes, and learn from them. The journey is half the fun. As we conclude our phrasal verb adventure, remember this. You hold the key to unlocking a world of communication and understanding. English, with its vast vocabulary and nuanced expressions, is your oyster. So go forth with confidence. Use your newfound phrasal verb prowess to connect with people from all walks of life. Explore new cultures and express yourself with clarity and flair. The world is waiting to hear your voice in all its phrasal verb glory. Like and subscribe for more videos to help you speak like a